Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this introductory session on uh, principles of management. My name is Satish uh, Jackson. I work as an assistant professor with the School of Computing here at uh, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Let's look at some of the formal definitions of management from some of the influential thinkers and management gurus. Uh, for instance, Peter F. Drucker, uh, he's called the father of uh, modern management or uh, management thinking. He was uh, one of the widely known and influential uh, figures of management. He is all his writings had a real understanding and empathy uh, towards you know the challenges and the demands that were faced by the managers. Next is Henry Fayol. Uh, he's called the father of uh, management uh, theory. He introduced the uh, fourteen principles of uh, management. He actually uh, held up various roles uh, during the French Revolution up to the uh, managerial level. Next is uh, Frederick uh, Winslow Taylor. Uh, he is called the father of uh, scientific management. So, if you look at all these uh, keywords, so what can we deduce, uh, you know, about the understanding of us that we have about management? So, it's all about, uh, you know, meeting the goals and objectives uh, by performing the various uh, functions uh, such as planning, organizing, uh, budgeting, reporting, uh, by making use of the resources in an efficient and effective manner. Now, what are these resources? It could be your system resources, it could be your human resources, your financial resources, your uh, natural resources, etc. So, this all encompasses about management, okay. Uh, so, now comes to a question, uh, is management considered as an art or a science? So, let us look at each of these uh, distinctively. So, what is art? Art teaches us what to do, right? Uh, so, it is all about, uh, you know, the practical uh, experience, perfection through practice, uh, creativity, uh, interpersonal skills. So, that is all about art. So, now what is science? Science teaches us uh, what to know. It contains, uh, uh, you know, underlying principles and theories uh, that were developed, uh, you know, through continuous observation, uh, experimentation and research. Now, the answer to this question is management and art or a science. It actually includes both because uh, the, uh, you know, the art of managing begins when the, uh, the science of managing stops, okay, in order to make the management uh, complete. Since the science of managing is imperfect, uh, that is why one has to acquire the, you know, the artistic mani managerial uh, ability to be able to perform and, you know, proceed further at his or her career. Now, what are some of the characteristics of management? Uh, management is goal oriented. Everything is, you know, uh, directed towards a goal or objective, okay, uh, and everyone has to follow that. So, this could be both at the individual unit or department level or it could be rolled up to the organization. It all depends on the, you know, the organization, the structure of the organization, etc. So, everyone in that organization should be, you know, working towards achieving those goals or objectives. Uh, it's a series of continuing and related uh, activities. So, this continuing, all these uh, different functions that we just saw, the planning, organizing, staffing, uh, budgeting, report, it's all like never ending. It always exists, you know, every time. So, it's and it's all interrelated. You, you should not look at it, you know, very distinctively. Uh, it consists of ideologies, policies and with a human interaction. Now, these are all your, you know, vision and mission uh, of the organization of your individual departments, depending on the structure of your organization. Of course, it's all, it all has to be, you know, formulated uh, with the help and support and cooperation of the most important resources in your organization, which is your people organization, the human resources, okay. So, it is dynamic and multi-dimensional. Why it is dynamic? Because all these goals and objectives, the management has to be flexible, has to be adaptable. They should be able to, you know, change it based on the changes that is predominant in your internal and external factors. It could be micro, it could be macro uh, uh, conditions, okay. So, internal, uh, for example, internal factors could be a change in management or, or change in key personnel, uh, a change in focus areas, you know, availability of funds, etc. External could be, you know, economical, political, uh, your social, uh, environmental, etc. It is intangible. Uh, management as a concept, it cannot be physically uh, seen, okay. Uh, it cannot be touched upon, uh, but it can be felt. Uh, how? Uh, with the way that organizations are being run. Uh, 
Um, it's very easy to identify mismanagement. How uh, if there is a lot of chaos and confusion in the organization, that's how you'll be able to you know figure out like you know the organization is being mismanaged. It is universal because it is globally applicable. Okay, it applies to uh, every type of uh, industry. You know, public enterprises, private, government, military, your household work. So everything requires management. It is intellectual because you need to apply, you know, science, uh, you need to apply math, you need to apply your intelligence, your mindset, uh, etc. It is social because it's all about what is the most important resources in an organization. It's the human resources, right? So it's all about the behavior traits of the individual, uh, in, uh, you know, people and how they work as a team. Because we all know like teamwork is very, very important in today's, uh, you know, organizations. It is pervasive. It is universally uh, present everywhere. Okay, um, irrespective of how large or small your organizations are, what type of industry it operates, what is the geography, what is the location, what kind of is it a product company, is it a service company? It doesn't matter. It's all pervasive. It's universally applicable. Okay. Now, what are some of the objectives of management? Uh, broadly, can be classified into organizational, uh, social, and uh, personal. Okay. So organizational. So what is organization all about? So but surviving, uh, you know, in this uh, world and to show growth, to show profit, uh, to, you know, make the stakeholders happy, uh, to meet the objectives of the organization uh, without, you know, leading to conflict of interest. So these are all some of your organizational objectives. Now, what is social? So social is all about people, right? So the behavior of individuals, uh, how to keep our employees happy, how to, you know, uh, make them motivated, mo uh, make them inspired, uh, what kind of job roles do we have to give them, what kind of incentives, you know, how to make sure that, uh, you know, the employees are able to stay longer with our organization and be, uh, you know, be able to product, uh, show the productivity, uh, how efficient are the resources. So these are all some of the social aspects. Now coming to uh, personal. So personal is all about individual, right? So what is it that the employee wants uh, for him or for her, both as an individual and for him or her to work as a team as well. Because at the end of the day, you know, most of the projects are uh, you know, not just based on individuals, it works as a team, right? So if the team fails, the project fails. So, uh, so that's the importance of, you know, the personal objectives, the growth, uh, the career, uh, what kind of training, what kind of development does the employee needs, etc. What are uh, some of the functions of management uh, without going into too much of uh, detail? So planning. So planning is the most basic and essential uh, function uh, that you typically start with, uh, you know, in the management uh, cycle. So you assess the present and you chart the future uh, course of action. Okay. Uh, next is organizing. Organizing is all about grouping of uh, resources and the activities that are put together in terms of division of work, a clear-cut responsibility, who does what, etc. Staffing is all about your human resources. Okay, what kind of talent that you want to hire for your organization? How do you want to hire? What's the time period? What are the skill sets that you are looking for of your organization? What is the uh, how to retain talent as well? So all about you know resource allocations. So that's about staffing. Next is directing. Directing is more like um, overseeing you know managing delegating leading leadership qualities decision making so all of those falls under directing what is controlling controlling you, you need to uh, you know establish standards and then you need to measure your actions uh, with respect to your estimates see if there's any deviation and if there's any deviation you need to take corrective actions for that so that's all about controlling okay uh, coordinating is more like a support function okay so it's basically synchronizing and unifying the actions of the people, the groups of people. Uh, next is reporting. You have various reports, right, uh, that you generate, maybe a work completion status, maybe to see what's the sales growth for your products or for your services or for a specific geography. And then probably, uh, you know, you might have to pass it on to your uh, upper management for them to take a look at it, the 360 degree dashboards that you use uh, with the BI intelligence, business intelligence tools, etc. Uh, budgeting is all about you know financial planning and allocation of uh, financial resources to various activities how much of a budget you need to do uh, what kind of budget and where do you uh, you know receive the funds uh, do you go for loans or you know bonds uh, shares etc so that's all about budgeting cycle so uh, this is a very basic uh, you know 5ms in management so what is 5ms in management it's all about manpower to start with 
which is nothing but your human resource, which is the most key asset of any organization. Because without human resource, uh, you know, nothing else works in an organization. Uh, next is your materials. So without manpower, materials is of no use. So you need to make sure that the materials, whether it's raw materials or semi-finished goods or finished goods should be of higher quality, right? That's how you, uh, in a way that you beat competition. Uh, the next is your machines equipments okay so without uh, manpower and materials machines would be more redundant would be more useless of late we are seeing so much of you know machines uh, you know artificial intelligence automation right from agriculture to you know iot so in agriculture for example machines uh, you know do the work of harvesting tilting uh, methods methods it's nothing but the process that is involved okay so the operation cycle uh, so who does what like what is the frequency okay uh, the last one is money. Money is more like cash, you know, the funds. Uh, it just It's not just based on the cash, but it could also be, uh, you know, your debts, your bonds, uh, you know, stock options, etc. So broadly, these are the five M's in management. So what is the evolution of management? So let's broadly look into two categories. One is pre-scientific, the other one is, uh, you know, during the scientific era. So as I said in one of my previous slides, uh, Frederick Winslow Taylor, he's called the father of scientific management. So during pre-scientific uh, management era, so there was an emphasis on workers, you know, well-being, uh, because you need to look into the context, okay? So mostly, you know, the workers were typically working in factories. So to improvise on the working conditions of those factories, maybe to reduce the working hours, to, uh, you know, pay them sufficiently based on the work, based on the productivity that the workers are showing, to improve the working conditions, uh, maybe to provide meals, uh, you know, for the well-being, for the health. Uh, division of labor, uh, how to extract, you know, the productivity, how to measure the efficiency, both from a people's perspective as well as from the operations or the process perspective. So that's your engineering efficiency and to provide time, you know, wages for the employees for the work that they are being put into, okay. And also there was an emphasis on managerial problems, uh, what kind of demands that the employees are putting forward and uh, how to you know make them happy how to make them satisfied how to make them content with what they are doing um, you know what are the demands so basically you know give a lending here to the problems or the issues that are raised by the employees uh, during the scientific management era, so we have various types of theories classical behavior modern management so classical could be your failures uh, you know uh, administrative theory your uh, scientific theory etc behavior could be you know human values uh, modern management could be your system theory your contingency theory etc okay so universally apply the principles of operation so make up some standards and make it globally applicable in order to extract efficiency for both people as well as for your operations you basically separate the planning uh, which is more like a supervisory role and then the doing which is more of a worker role so you basically separate these two into two different functions and you apply scientific uh, selection training development uh, for these workers as well elimination of waste so there's so much of uh, you know um, relevance in today's world right to reduce waste how to make it more productive or to make it more efficient so that's about elimination of waste you standardize your processes your people uh, you know what kind of work that they have to do so you basically come up with the templates for them to use okay uh, it's all also about, uh, you know, guidance, mentorship, because it's all people involved, right? So the cooperation, uh, the support, um, the, you know, the kindness, the empathy, the compassion that you show, the teamwork, okay, the helping nature. So all of these comes under guidance about leadership, because uh, it's best to, you know, lead by example, isn't it? Uh, incentives for higher production of course you need to provide proper you know wages to all the employees and especially for those employees who show higher productivity you need to uh, you know uh, match them with you know good incentives it could be perks in any way uh, stock options company paid vacation holidays bonuses uh, increments etc okay uh, establishing harmonious relationships so what is harmony it's all about positive vibrant you know to have that good feeling a cordial relationship a professional relationship with every worker that you interact with so this harmonious relationship it's not just among the workers but also between the workers as well as the management so uh, a little bit about organization structure because when we think about management are uh, we closer related to uh, organization structure isn't it so what is organization structure it is abstract okay it cannot be seen in the same way as you would see a, a mechanical or a biological structure okay so it can be inferred from the actual operations 
and the behavior, the culture of that, you know, the employees uh, who are part of that organization. It also refers to the levels of management and how the responsibilities are being divided. So it's a very broad concept, okay? So it all depends on the organization, the industry that it operates, the locality, the geography, the region, etc. So we cannot really say that it should be like two levels, three levels or four levels. So it can be broadly into, uh, you know, uh, depends on, totally depends on the organization. Employee responsibility. So responsibilities are typically defined by what the employees are supposed to do, supposed to perform, supposed to work, okay, and what kind of output that they are expected to, uh, you know, show. Uh, so over time, these definitions were assigned to positions rather than to individuals, uh, because for all practical reasons, uh, we know that, right, because employees, uh, in today's world, you know, many of the organizations, there is always uh, employee, you know, churn out, okay, so uh, existing employees move out for better opportunities or for other reasons and the new employees come in. So it's always an ongoing cycle. So, so that's why these responsibilities are tied up to an employee's uh, position rather than to the actual employee itself. Okay. So what is the threefold purpose of an organization structure? All necessary activities are to be performed, which also means that no unnecessary activity should be performed. Okay. No unnecessary duplication should be done when you are performing necessary activities. And finally, all these activities should be, you know, in sync. It should be coordinated. It should be sequ uh, sequential. It should be interrelated, interconnected. Okay. So what are some of the factors in designing uh, an organization structure? So uh, departmentalization, again, this is a very, uh, you know, unique to organizations, how the organization structure, what kind of industry, what kind of products, or is it a service, what kind of target markets are they looking into? So depending on that, the individual departments are being formed, okay? So balancing, so each element of an organization should be seen in the context of the total structure of that organization. So there should be a fair balance, okay, between the two. Operational responsibility. So this is about work assignment, work responsibility, because along with assignment comes, comes the responsibility part and along with the responsibility comes the accountability part. So that has to be taken care of. Establishing span. So this is more about the number of, uh, you know, the employees that a manager can have. Uh, there's not really a fixed number. Again, it's it's a very wide concept, okay? It varies based on a uh, lot of factors, actually. Uh, so for example, if it's a startup company, then probably you might have a very lean structure. Uh, with less number of you know managerial levels but if it's more of a traditional a large company uh, in that case uh, you might have you know multiple uh, managerial levels so it all depends on the industry you know an organization its culture etc uh, facilitating units so these are the individual departments committees uh, etc so again it's all unique to an organization so these are some of the things that you have to keep in mind and continuity. So what is continuity? You have to think through in the long term. So the structure that whatever you are coming up today, it should uh, you know work uh, in the future as well. So that is something that you need to keep in mind. For example, if it's a fresh, a new company, probably if you want to expand to other geographies at a later stage, something that you need to keep in, into mind. Or if you want to venture into new domains or new areas, uh, etc., or new customer uh, target markets. So these are all some of the things that you have to keep in mind when you are coming up with the organization structure at the beginning. So human relations, right? So as I said earlier, um, the most important asset for any organization. So that's about people organization, about people, about human resources. So they should be viewed in humanistic terms, okay? You make the employees empowered. So what is empowerment? So you make them feel that they have a say in the organization, that they have a part to play, okay? Feel them more motivated, more inspired, that they can be retained, that they feel happy to work in your organization. So that's all about empowerment, okay? So there's a lot of uh, emphasis on social and psychological factors, you know, rewards, recognitions, keep them motivated, uh, health, well-being, there's all this yoga, Zumba, uh, you know, uh, meditations, company paid holidays and psychological factors. So there's a lot of, uh, especially after during COVID and after COVID time, right? So there's a lot of uh, emphasis on mental well-being. So how well you'll be able to take care. So the stress part, right? So, uh, you know, work-life balance, so all of these comes under social and psychological factors, okay, because every individual is different. So we have to, we cannot commonize, we cannot, you know, standardize the behavior of uh, individuals. So it depends on the family situations, it depends on the peer pressure, it could be work pressure, it could be individual pressure as well, uh, like how far that they can take as an individual. Uh, better human relations. So what are some of the advantages if you provide a cordial working relationship? It will lead to productivity, a positive work-life balance, 
a positive you know working environment uh, employees uh, tend to be happy they tend to be motivated they can help others uh, you know uh, they can strive for a better work life balance they can be healthy so all these are, are some of the advantages okay uh, so for to keep employees motivated there's a lot of uh, you know different kinds of incentives per, uh, perks increments uh, salary hikes uh, stock options, um, company paying holidays, uh, okay, so, uh, and also it's very important for the management, uh, you know, that they listen to the grievances or the issues or the challenges that are being faced by the employee. So, primary part for the management is to be able to listen, okay. The respect, support, understanding, and what so better human relation because it's all about people, right? As I said earlier, um, even though we work as individuals at the end of the day, it's all about teamwork, okay. So, if the team successful, then the project or the product or the service that they are uh, catered towards that will work okay so that gets rolled up to the organization level so it's very important to cultivate the team for that team support uh, the cooperation coordination finally uh, so what are some of the trends and uh, challenges in management so these are the general trends and challenges uh, that are faced uh, in management uh, without uh, any order of significance. So now first on the general trends, it's all about flat structure, okay? So it's not just with startups that they have a flat structure. It's, all, it's also, you know, predominant in traditional companies where they are removing multiple layers of management levels. They are having some kind of, you know, a lean structure, okay? So that employees are more encouraged, more motivated to be able to approach uh, with the management. Uh, flexible work environments this i think uh, we have <laughs> very much seen during uh, covid and after covid as well so work from home option even today i think uh, some of the companies are still following the hybrid model a mix of both work from home as well as physically coming to the office and working so, okay so flexible work environments not just with the location but also with respect to the time zones okay Automating technology into process there's so much of emphasis uh, in the last few years right with uh, artificial intelligence, uh, generative AI, robotics, uh, IoT, Internet of Things, etc. So how, to, how do you bring technology and automate them into your everyday operations or everyday processes? Open and continuous feedback. So gone are those days when, wherein there was a formal uh, you know, appraisal or a feedback cycle because nowadays I think many of the companies are encouraging employees or whoever is a stakeholder to be able to provide, uh, you know, have an open channel for feedback session as well. So these are some of the general trends. Uh, now coming to the general uh, challenges that the uh, management in specific phases are, it could be classified internal, external, okay. Internal is like, you know, because every employee is different, right? So they have a different mindset, they have a different kind of challenges that they are facing. So sometimes employees also could be difficult, okay, because of various reasons. So management has to find a way uh, to be able to, you know, uh, face the demands or the challenges that are being faced by the employees. Uh, budget, the funds allocation, the availability of funds, etc. Putting that into a proper usage. So that also could be a, a, a case. Externals could be your, especially with the wars that is going on and you know the climate crisis and the availability of the non-availability of water and the environmental natural resources. If you are into a production or a semiconductor or supply chain, you know that supply chain constraints, right? Especially if you are importing your supply chain from other countries, from other suppliers. Uh, if you are MNC, global operations, then you know the time zone, the cross-cultural fitment, working with those customers, uh, with who's, uh, like the partners that you tie up with, and the laws, the rules, and the regulations of those countries where you have a presence. All of that falls under global operations. Setting unrealistic expectations. So this could be from the management side as well. So sometimes because of the competition, because of the stakeholder pressure, there's a lot of, uh, you know, employee burnouts that's happening so that is something that you need to keep into mind so be more practical be more feasible okay so in terms of the expectations that you set with the with your employees uh, corporate governance issues and stake stakeholders are nothing but uh, anyone who has an interest in your company okay so it could be your management it could be your employees it could be your suppliers it could be your uh, customers it could be your competitors it could be the government uh, folks uh, etc so anyone who has an interest uh, you know uh, stakeholder so uh, corporate governance issues. I think uh, of late also we have seen few companies which are you know too fast to grow or too big to fail uh, that they have grown so rapidly over a short period of time now that they are able to you know face challenges how they can sustain that same profit or the same growth or the same survival uh, going forward. So a lot of corporate governance issues and misusing funds uh, you know stakeholder pressure and finally uncertainty about future. 
Uh, this is something that we cannot totally avoid, uh, but it's always good to have some kind of uh, insight. You account for it or be prepared to make you make yourself, you know, adaptable, okay? Because any of the external factors, you don't have much control uh, on yourself, right? So this completes the introductory session on principles of management. Thank you for your time and have a great day.